All right, guys, welcome to the sessions. This is a Renee Paquette, Emilio Medugno special coming at you hot. And here's how I would like to start things. It's really bullshit that men don't get PMS. Like, <laughs> we how? do. No, we do. I don't know. I mean, y'all have like your own issues, of course. But like, it's so frustrating to just like for, a you know, two and a half days max a month. I'm just like raging raging i kicked like a hole through my fence today (laughs) because it was just like all (laughs) happening at once like i'm trying to walk out the house i have this nice idea i'm like i'm gonna take nora down to the park we're gonna go for a little walk got her in one arm her snacks her water my water my fanny pack which keeps sliding down my freaking arm fell behind the radiator had to get that thing i walk out front uh to go get the stroller out of the truck to realize it's been left in the rain. So now I can't even take her in the thing. But I could, anyways, I couldn't get out of the gate. I did not mean to kick my foot through the gate. John's not seen this yet. I'm gonna have to come up with a better story to tell him. Um, but yeah, I rage kicked the gate trying to get out. And uh, it was not a pretty scene. It was not a great moment for me. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's bullshit that women PMS like this once a month where it's just this like inexcusable behavior. Listen, we all flip our shit. It's it it happens. You kick the gate. It's okay. A gate can be replaced. It's an now, old you- gate, to be fair. I I didn't like donkey kick it. Like I do think I've got a pretty strong thigh on me, but it is a very old gate. So my foot just went right through. Hey, it happens. <laughs> now if you're going around Cincinnati just kicking kicking random shit. If you're going around Cincinnati just kicking random shit, well then. That's an issue. That's a different story. That's sure, a different sure. Story, but it didn't if it affects anybody, but no, me. No, Nora's probably watching in excitement and clapping, like real, like yeah, I'll <laughs> no. kick it next. <laughs> you should definitely not do stuff like that in front of your kid. That's just like soaking up all these things. I just like huffed it, like I front kicked it, I big booted it. That's a um, big, big boot. Now, do big you just, boot. so now when you go through? um your monthlies does john try to just avoid you no because like i i normally aside from the story where i just sound like a complete lunatic i don't normally have like meltdowns like that like i might have like a bitchy moment maybe i don't know maybe i'm just used to it but it's crazy that this has happened to me for the last 20 years 20 so just, years so you're Once just raging for 20 years this happens and every month that it sneaks up on me and i'm like why do i feel this way and i'm like oh because you're about to get your period cool and you're just rage kicking everything yeah okay everyone gets the kick big oh, you, boots all around big big boots Oof. every month for for a couple mm. of days it's okay oh my gosh anyways okay. i'm just i'm just trying to simmer down you know i'm gonna do i'm gonna light a candle I think you should. I think you these should. Guys, I got these really like cool long candles that, like coming out this thing. Or, you got um, a... uh, uh, this is not a candle. This is a match. These big yeah. long fancy matches. Yeah. You got a nice little Zen den going on over here. Trying to. Should I? Oh, sh- I just broke it. Did you see that? Shit? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> um, okay. I think that for real, what we should start talking about here is Teddy Longgate. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What? I, I, I want to know why did he go on an unfollowing spree? Are you for- unfollowed or are you blocked or whatever? No, I I I'm good. I I passed. I survived. I survived. <laughs> I'm good. It's one of those things like I wish that I got blocked by Teddy Long and I wish I got followed by John Cena. It's one of those things where How yeah, where- I saw your post about that. There we go. Okay. There you go. Yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's set the vibe. Annoying. Let's set the vibe. Let's we're good. Just say a little prayer. Do a little seance. Okay, there, there we go. go. There, we're good to go. We got to get you As some I sage. Light. Uh, yeah, I probably should have some sage, actually. I might have some downstairs. Yeah. I had some when we lived in Vegas. I had like like an Amazon like bulk thing of sage because we moved into our house. And at the time, uh, however many years ago, we moved into our house in Vegas. I was very into that, like, earthy, let's cleanse the spirits, which I should have done in this house because this house is old as dirt. This house must have ghouls galore. I've not seen any. I've not felt any. But when we moved into our house in Vegas, I was like, we have to sage. We've got to open all the doors. We've got to cleanse the house. Where here I was like, let's just load all of our shit in and figure it out. 
you know what you have to do you should bring in like one of those like spirit mediums into no your because i don't want to know and john doesn't want to know like john hates that <laughs> he's got no time for it like i'm curious about it and i definitely like like i i'm very curious about it and i love to like really learn more and like i love the other world i love a little spiritual kind of who whatever the f i love that shit but john does not so I, if i was in somebody else's house and doing that that would be one thing but doing it in our own house is a that's a little bit more like i gotta sleep here you know yeah, it's it's you don't know what you're conjuring up, but exactly. Hey, you don't listen, want to knock on that door. Spooky sessions is coming up soon, kids. Mm -hmm. We're 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 planning a whole spooky yes. rollout. So just just be. Just oh, be I'm there. so excited. So last night I started reading. I get very into getting the uh, like all different like scary books to read, and I've been on that big Colleen Hoover kit. Huge. Me, Caleb Braxton started our book club. I've read like 16 of her books in the last like two months. It's the most I've read in years plowing through devouring these books anyways I've, I've ordered a bunch more but i was like let's just pump the brakes for one quick second you got a small window of it being spooky season let's get into it so last night i started reading head full of ghosts by paul tremblay i believe his name is this book's supposed to be really really great uh, but i've got that one on my bedside table the shining the bell witch um i just got another book from the author that um did like the practical magic series those books are really good i love that movie i would actually say practical magic is better than hocus pocus i have to agree with you yeah I, I don't understand the hocus pocus kit. i like really. hocus pocus but people like now they've just over hyped it well everybody wants the nostalgia train it's the, and mm -hmm. it's the greatest movie ever like the 31 days of halloween just put out their list of what they're gonna do on free form which is like yeah like they do 31 days of specific content and hocus focus is on like almost every day you just call it Hell. Hocus Focus. Yeah, because I don't give it. No. I don't. I don't care about it. That's why. <laughs> I, just, I don't. I, I'm not into it. I don't understand it. I mean, Sarah I do Jessica, like. Like I do like it, and I'm looking forward to the new one. Like I'll definitely watch it. John, I watched a trailer for it the other night, and he was like, "Oh, it's just the exact same concept as what the original one was." I was like, "Yep," and we're gonna watch it, and it, I'm sure it's gonna be great. Uh, but Practical Magic is it for me, especially like God that window of like. Early 90s Sandra Bullock is just so good. Early Sandra, Bull I mean, Sandra Bullock, don't get me wrong. I will watch anything that woman does. I love Sandra Bullock. But then you also have like young, cool, like very like free flowing Nicole Kidman, who normally she plays like a rather rigid character. And I like that she's like popping into the PTA meetings and like trying to like hump up on everybody. I think it's great. I love those movies. And a well, young um Evan Rachel Wood as well. I mean, I like the whole cast though. Like what I like Stalker Channing. So Me too. Any anything that she does, I'm like What a good name, hey? Stalker right? Channing. What is that like derived from? What is what is its origin stories, I wonder? Uh, I would assume either Stalkered. Irish or Scottish. Maybe to be right? like, here's my baby, Stalkered. Stalkered. Yeah, here you this is this is now we just listen, we we screwed you now. So you can't have an average person job. Go no, be an you've got to go make something of yourself. Yeah, go you've got play, an artsy fartsy name. Go play Rizzo in Greece. Yes, and then play Aunt Frances in Practical Magic, Gosh. and just go forth. Those just books are very good too, by the way. Um, Practical Magic, and oh, I can't remember what the other one's called. I don't know if there's two or three of them, but uh, is it really... a, is it a sequel of the like other? It's other a prequel. Owen sisters? It's actually so... a prequel. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Then yeah, the other one that I just picked up from the same author, I believe, is like still witch stuff, but it all happens during like World War One in like Europe. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I literally passed a bookstore and it was in the window and it was super old, but I was like, I need to have that. So yeah, I've got to add that in there. Yeah, you got um, some, you got a good little collection of books here. I like, do. Oh yeah, I've got a lot. lots. You have a I've library lot. now. Lots to work with. Plenty, plenty to work with. So I got to see you on Wednesday. We were in New York at Arthur Ashe Stadium. You saw Love me it. as I was walking out of a tech closet. Yeah, it was a very nice, Um, it was a very nice random, you know, like, hey, I know you, you know me, mm -hmm. we hug. I saw your husband first. He's he a offered, good guy. 
He a big. You mean big, you mean the AEW World Champion three times over? Oh, Johnny, thrice. Johnny three, th- Johnny three times. Johnny three times. Johnny three times. I see Johnny three times walking in, and I'm like, he's like, hey, and I'm like, hey, and everybody's like, they they look at us because it was just like one of those things that like, and you know, you get a listen, you get a hey from John Moxley, you just feel all warm inside. That's such because- bullshit, man. That he, I mean, <laughs> it, it's just funny to me because he like so is like unapproachable sometimes that he is nice to somebody for a second. They're like, oh my god, this is so great. I'm nice to everybody all the time. Well, they're Shit. used to it. They're exactly. Used to it. I'm just giving it away for free, left, right, and center. It. I'm, I'm like, gonna start locking that shit up. I'm like, where's the wife? He's like, let's go find her. And then, like, he's like, oh, there she is. As he's holding bread, he departs. We're we're checking out. <laughs> holding the bread, always with the bread. bread. Oh, he loves to carve up. On, yeah, he loves he loves carve it. up. Mm-hmm. So, he's holding so the did bread. you not realize though when you saw me and I was walking out of a tech closet? Did that not strike you as an odd place for me to be walking out of? No, I listen. My common sense deduced that there was something going on. Okay, deduced. But I, I wasn't. I wasn't going to pry and. Oh, ask because I could me. never. I would never listen. Kate to Fabe, brother. Is Fizz Briz? Yeah, Kate to Fabe. So I was just like, I'm gonna let Honey do what she do, and eventually it'll come to light, and we'll all know <sighs> what's going on. But oh my god, okay, so to be out there when Soraya debuts in AEW, yeah. like I nearly shit my pants. I almost cried. I was so happy for this moment and the fact that it came together the way that it did. I was so happy to be there. So I was standing at the very back of the stadium on the ground um, where like some like the AEW like crew is like where they're like running stuff for like the truck back there. So I was just standing back there watching and then knowing that I'm like, all right, I need to like get eyes. I need to like have my phone out for when this happens. So I jumped up on one of the tour cases and was like making sure I got that angle. Boy, did I get scolded for that, but I got the shot. So it was worth it. Uh, But man, what a great moment that was to have Soraya join AEW. What this means for the women's division, which to me, I mean, is there a bigger star to step in that spot and we've not seen her wrestle in years right. to now have this like massive presence for somebody that just like lives and breathes pro wrestling um i think she's going to make a huge difference for them um and i'm i'm just so excited it was such a cool moment what a pop Woo! that place was rocking and oh my god I'm, I'm i'm over there with a friend And like the music hits and automatically I knew it was like before you even saw the name on the screen, you hear the music and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I know this song. That's the boyfriend song. Falling in reverse. Yeah. And I'm like, zombified. I was like, wait a minute. Okay. Whoa. She comes out looking like a trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. Full, uh, Full transparency here. Big E knows this. Used to have a massive crush on that one. Who didn't? Who I, didn't? Right in the wheelhouse of aesthetics. I mean, the woman is absolutely stunning, right? Yeah, she's a babe. And then her personality, hysterical. I got to send it to you a long time ago. E got her to send me a video just like saying hi. It was super cute. Made my day. Um, oh, so when she best. when she comes out the place, she had pop of the night. I think it, oh, it was just hands down. I would say. I mean, it, the place was nuts. She comes out, the place is rocking and rolling, and then you 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 think, okay, well, what 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 is it? Because what she, does this mean? She alluded to on our show when we were in Nashville that she's good, like she is healthy, but she can bump, but she's afraid to bump because she does not know. Like what's what's going on, you know? Like, but she was she was Gucci. Like she was she was straight. Yeah, she's so you, good. So like maybe that was like a hint or a tell. I, I maybe she was dropping some foregone conclusion. Like like little like hey, this is what we're a little I, a little breadcrumb little, trail. Little Hinsky, you know what I mean? This might be that might have been an Easter egg. You might have to go back and watch the Soraya interview on YouTube. Yeah, go back and watch that. You know, like why don't you go do that? And <sighs> um, and then she comes out. She's like, this is my house. Now, when they cleared the ring, right, that's normally like a tell where it's like, okay, you like this person can't get touched right now. So like I'm but on the website, see, I don't I don't think of it that way. I just think of it as like a star making moment. You know, everyone clears the ring. No one else needed to be in the ring. This was just I'm here. Soraya is all elite. 
Yeah. Now no. on to the next week. I don't think that it was a no touch thing. I think what's really important is there is glaring holes in that women's division where sure. where you will see like just glimpses of greatness, right? You will see glimpses of really solid story. They've got some really great talent. They they I'm do. I'm a big Jamie Hader fan, by the way. How can another? I I'm, like, like her. Cool Brits. I like a cool Brit. Who does What can I say? Who, who I, I also like, like cool Britt Baker, speaking of cool Brits. Another um, cool Brit. Well, another listen, cool Brit. knows how to dress. Huge, love the aesthetic. <laughs> Huge aesthetics <laughs> on that girl. But um, you need, I think you need like the Osiris right yeah. now. Like you need that. And yeah. you need people to revolve around her for a little while. And well, I because think it's her- always just been Brit up until this point. And now like it just, it needs to kind of evolve into this new thing. It gives other people yeah. more things to do. It kind of, it just opens things up a ton. I think in terms of storytelling and match potential, all that um, just to really garner a ton of interest. Like I said, it's like, God, you look at that women's division and like, there's a lot of really great, talented, talented women there, like stars. It's time to start like really showcasing these women and giving that like great TV time, great matches, all that shit. You know, and you're excited for Soraya because she never really got the opportunity to start having the matches that she wanted right before she got injured. Right. Right. And it was a series of unfortunate events. And yeah. she missed that that boom, that women's revolution boom. Like and she, she was, and she kickstarted that thing though. Right. She kickstarted that. Like she, to me, when I think of like the women's evolution and that all happening, it was like, I mean, that that moment on TV was like her, AJ, the Bella twins. Uh, that was like really what kind of sprung things into action. But you think of her being like the anti diva. Um, and the matches that her and Emma were having at NXT, her and Bailey, her and Sasha, like you yeah. look at all of those matches that she was having, like I really feel like she was the backbone of really kind of changing what this was, what oh, women's I- wrestling was and is. Oh, absolutely. If you go back and watch the Hulu days of, of NXT, you know, like me and good E had salad that. salad days. It was a good yeah. time. I mean, me and, me and E were talking about that. He was like, yo, she was she was the staple for all, like, the women's stories. She 100%. Was, she, she, I mean, she was the she, first she, NXT women's champion, too. So now I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what she does. You know, now everybody's like, dude, does she get thrusted into the world title picture real quick? No, she don't need to. What she, she needs need to do. She doesn't need a title. No, she don't. She like there are certain people that are above world heavyweight championships, right? For the time being, when they come in, it's just you want to establish her, what she wants to do. You have to, because again, it's all about social conditioning. Because the first thing you think of, you you automatically want to start calling her Paige on when you see her on TV. Sure. So now it's time to get people to understand her name is Soraya. We got to call her Soraya. 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 I know Soraya. she had to put out that tweet the other day. She was like, "This is how you say my name." Yeah, I was kind of getting. <laughs> butchered a little bit <laughs> so you know i, I think I, I personally me i think the first feud hot shot her and Britt baker you let them just go don't you let think them they do what they wait do. for that um i don't to be honest with you I, who else do you, i don't want to see her wrestle tony right now sure. you know maybe yeah. she goes against maybe she goes against hater or maybe she tries to convince Hater to be like, "Hey, come to the cool British side. Let's 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 be cool Brits together." Yeah, like you know, like let's yeah. submission sorority sisters, bro. Like, what do you mm-hmm. want to do? Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. So I, yeah. I I think you start I think you start with Brit because Brit's face told the whole entire story. Right? Oh, one hundred percent. She sold so, that beautifully. And you know, I did. Was her nose broken or no? I can. I'm not sure. She bleeds with the best of them, man. Let me tell you something. She's up there with Ric Flair. She bleeds with the best of them. Like, yeah. When, like when once that color starts to flow, Britt Baker is on point. Um, <laughs> well, her facial expressions were incredible. So, so good. Like, that's who I want her to start with because it's like, all right, let's. Yeah, go you're right. And where it goes from there. You are right, especially you're like, yeah. From having that moment of Britt's reaction to also like the entire division feeling like it is Britt. It's cool now to just like see that sort of like ownership, like it's my house, all that shit. So yeah, right. I, I I'm I cannot wait to watch it. I feel really excited about it. I just I love I love when things can just like come together like that, and it is really rare to like truly have those moments of surprise. 
Um, I that really, was a surprise. It was a I, big it, it, surprise. I don't think anyone knew. No, nobody seen that coming. I was like, mm -mm. what? I was, oh, oh. Let's. That was a I great show. I love it. Though. It was From a great show. Start to finish. That, that, that was show my was first really time cool. being able to like, act, like I was out there for uh, Soraya's stuff. And then John was, John and Brian were immediately after that. So um, I had not seen John wrestle in a, like probably two years yeah because i always anytime i'm there i have the baby with me and then i have to leave the building by about 5 5 30 to get her back to the hotel get her ready for bed eat and all that stuff um so we went to new york without the baby which whew, let me tell you that was like so stressful it was really nice it was really nice because we got to just like hang out tuesday we walked through my old neighborhood in new york and then like wednesday morning i like cruised through the city went to like uh, union square they had their farmer's market out what a thing of beauty that was. Oh, my Incredible. God. There's nothing so great. better than a fall in New York City. Oh, my God. Honestly, there's nothing better. But, yeah, I was definitely, like, a little bit panicked by the end of, like, I need to get back home to my baby. I just kept, like, looking, like, on her baby monitor to, like, watch her. Sweet little noodle. And but it was really was nice fine. to just, like, actually enjoy the show and, like, just be there as a person and, like, talk to people and get to, like, hang for a little bit. It was cool. I know. I should have went and hung out with you when you were watching because I wanted to watch your reaction. Still something I want to do so that way we can discuss it on here because I want, mm. like, the third-party specter what the wife is watching. Uh. Um, but I was so into the match, and I went to my seat, and I'm like, I'm, I'm here. Like, yeah. Let's. Like let's there, go, like yeah, you know, because it was it was important because it's like okay, you have two pivotal guys for the company right now, like two massive huge signees to AEW, two guys that came in at two different points. John came in at the very beginning, uh, Brian came in like like you know like a year or two later, and it's like okay, they're both doing two really different but the same things for the company. They're elevating top new talent getting these guys over by doing the work and not saying anything. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah, real, yeah, yeah. Blue, real blue collar, real hard work. It's, it's like what I texted you and I texted yeah. you a novel that day. Cause I was so, <laughs> I was so into it because there's a lot of similarities between like that hardworking blue collar guy, like my dad, who was a union construction worker all his life and your husband, like, yeah, they're like similar. My pop really don't say just much. Put your head down, do just the go job, to work. and like just go to work and do it. So after also all like of that, pride in your work too. I think that's something that really shines through in everything like that John's doing. It's like it just it's it's so, it's such a special time for him. And I think it means a lot too because your husband really could have taken the time off after rehab and just chill sure, right like sure. really like just focused on staying home and just doing this but he knew for the betterment of a himself and the company let me come and push push my needs aside for a minute but let me do this because this is this is this is work well you know what i mean like for it's work but it's also the thing love. that he loves like Absolutely. he loves it so it's not that he's like i gotta get back to work like Yes, it is getting back to work, but I think there's also like another thread of that that is like therapeutic for him right, too. Right, um, and he is the heartbeat. And I'll say it. I'll say it. Mm -hmm. You can tweet me at Emilio Sparks. You can let me know. You can let Renee know if you agree or disagree. If but you John Moxley, don't tell me. I don't want to yeah, hear that shit. We'll, we'll fight you. <laughs> um, but I, I think that John Moxley is the heartbeat of AEW from the first show up until Grand Slam. The man has been like the 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 consistent go gong go well gong. i think it's like go yeah gong. he's definitely like the heartbeat of that company but god this is gonna be bold maybe i shouldn't even say this but i feel like he is like one of the things that's just like so purely great about professional wrestling um yeah, I you know i i think just like the work he puts in the the work he does for himself to to always stay sharp to, to like continually have these great matches and like great opponents like i i really love when him and chris did like him and chris chris coming out as lionheart chris jericho like who saw that coming no who knew didn't. that was going to be a great thing in 2022 yeah but a testament to chris as well as like man like the guy just like he's so great at reinventing himself and he's not someone you see go back in time like that but I think it was something that like just really worked and then having brian work with him as uh as lionheart chris jericho i think he just like reminded everybody like yeah it's chris jericho everybody yeah yeah right and it's just it's good to see that the top guys 
actually know like, okay, in order for this thing to grow, because, you know, yes, it's moving by leaps and bounds in terms of like popularity and television deals and, 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 you know, rating shares and whatever AEW is going into its fourth year. It's still yeah. relatively, it's small. That's it's baby. new. Four years is new, new, new. Oh my God. Like when you think of a company starting in four years, getting on television, going through the bumps in the road that this company has had too, and like rebuild, refocus, keep things on track. Like it's really impressive and it's really cool. And it's, you know, I think it's just like such a, a hopeful, cool time for, uh, for what they're doing. If you think about it, I, they're in this right now, AEW, a soft reboot post all out, right? Where yeah. the championship was in question and everything moving forward. Um, they did this quick little title tournament, which was smart. And then you have the guys, right? You have mm -hmm. your heavy hitters coming in to do it. And I don't want to see Danielson MJF. It makes sense, but not needed right now because there's a bigger thing going on between Danielson Jericho and Daniel Garcia, which yeah. to me is more important. And somehow, some way, I'm going to, I'll call the shot right now. And you, we can have this here. And you let me know if I called it right. If I was Sparks to Damas. <laughs> Daniel Bryan is going to be Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Champion. Ooh. Um, but your husband needed to be AEW World Champion because we're going to get better television between him and MJF. I like it. I like it a lot. I, you know what I like too? God, the options. Yeah. There's so many different places for the storytelling to like ebb and flow. It's cool. Yeah. I yeah, like and it. I think that's the most important thing right there is now telling... Uh, interesting story because leading up to Forbidden Door and Death Before Dishonor, it was real jumbled and you had two massive non real AEW pay-per-views. And like, if you're talking about Canon and it was very heavy with that. So a lot of AEW storylines took a back seat and that's not when the company is at its like apex. When the company's rocking and rolling is when they are hyper focused on everything that's going on, just AEW. Yeah. And I think like the last two or three weeks, they really started to adjust and pivot again and got really hyper focused. And you have all your key players right now doing what they're supposed to do. That the ones that are on TV, they're 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 crushing right now. And they should oh my be God, there. killing it, right. killing it. So, all wheels are like firmly on the track. And I think your husband and Max are going to do some pun intended dynamite shit. Like they're going <laughs> to, they're really going to go off. And, and I, 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 yeah, the match is going to be cool, but I want the war of words because it's going to be from two different places, both good promo guys. And Max I gonna just keep my name out of his damn mouth. <laughs> <laughs> She, I'm listening to her podcast. She's <laughs> kicking, she's kicking gates. You have an unstable wife. You have a lunatic fringe for a wife. <laughs> oh my God. What a scene that was. Good gracious. <laughs> um, okay. Let's talk about something that you and I have been talking about a little bit earlier in the week, which is my purchasing of some loafers. Um, it was just... The time, listen, did I just take like a very hard right about talking about like potential booking and like great wrestling television to let's talk about my loafers that I got? Again, fall season is upon us. It's time to revamp the fashion. What are we doing? What are the looks? What are the outfits? What do you, what do you, okay, so I have some brand new black cable knit sweaters. That oh, I, just I love a cable knit. I love a cable knit. I'm in the search for a, a I'll probably get a botch with my New York accent, a mohair. Uh, That's sweater. fine, a mohair. That's okay. right. How would you I, say it otherwise? Say it with the accent. Ma mo, hair, mole mo, hair, mole mo, hair, mole hair. Mo hair. Um, no, hair. I, I love all things sweaters, all things cozy knit fashion, but I have been hemming and hawing on these loafers, which is the reason why I got up early when I was in. Uh, New York City so I could go to the store to go try to buy them they did not have them the guy freaked me out and was like you can't get them which then of course made me go oh I can find them online and I am going to pull the trigger so I guess kind of jokes on me uh, sale still made by this man not that he gets a commission on it uh, but yeah I, the loafers are coming on Tuesday I'm really excited to lean into this I think I can pull off a loafer 
It was the first thing. A chunky soul loafer, by the way. It's a which, chunky soul. All the rage right now. It's I, I love a good chunky soul loafer, which, by the way, the first three seconds of seeing you Wednesday wasn't, hey, how are you? What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Why are you in this weird tech cl closet? It was my question to you is, did you get the loafers? <laughs> And at that point, it was a no. I heard they're very uncomfortable. They're hard to break in. And my dumb ass still yeah, couldn't no. stop thinking about them. So I bought them. But you I'm know what? I like a good, sensible flat shoe as well. Thank God, as like I'm in like my mom years, that flat shoes are the are the fashion right now. Thank God. You, you can't go wrong with a flat shoe. I think like, you know, how can I put this? It's like once we become a certain age, you want to dress age appropriate. Yes. But you don't want to look stuffy and old. Right? You know, what's funny is I was talking to Brian about this. Um, I don't know how this came up, but we were talking about as you're getting older, like you almost, like it's not that you're trying to be cool anymore. You got to stop trying to be cool. But it's like you can't follow every little trend that happens because we're kind of past that point in life. If I was in my mid twenties, you can, you can dabble in some of these trends, but once you're of a certain age, it looks like you're just reaching a little too hard. Yeah. So you got to find what works for you. Abs absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing. And I, I can't wait till you get them. I expect, Tuesday is a big day. I expect Tuesday's pictures. double shoe day for me. I also ordered, mm -hmm. so I just I I doubled down on more Docs too. I have like forty five pairs of Doc Martens, um, but I got a new pair that I'm in the middle of breaking, and I ordered the ribbon laces for them. So they've got like the black ribbon laces, and then the ones that I ordered that are coming on Tuesday are the ten hole ten eyelets. Uh, but then they have like a floral embroidery on the side. They're super cute. And then I also got Nora a pair. So we're suited and booted, as they the, say. I'm looking for, and I and I looked on the Docs website because I seen an Instagram ad for them. I don't think I'm you just... can go wrong with Docs. I think everybody should own a pair of Doc Martin shoes. But I was thinking of doing the loafers that they have. They're really cute. I thought about doing them too, but I was already mentally committed to the other ones. Well, you have. Well, I mean, listen, the other ones are, are the upper echelon of Italian footwear, so you have to. <laughs> Yeah. There's no, you ain't getting better than that, baby. You feel me? Like you're, 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 you're there, Gucci or Gucci. Shout out to you. <laughs> feel me? <laughs> but the dock ones are super cute. Because remember, yeah. I bought those flat or the shorter docks before when I was going to do the PGA stuff. And, and then you're like, I, I'm returning them. I, I did like them. take them back. I was not a fan. I was like, wow, she takes her dock serious here, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, the I've shoes only you ever were, had high ones. But the shoes you were wearing Wednesday were super cute too. And those ones are cool, yeah. I I liked the like boxy toe. It mm -hmm. was that was a fly fit though. I was trying. I put it on. I was so self conscious because I put Why? it on, and because first of all, I'm always this. I'm always just in like sweats and a hat and like not putting on an outfit. Um, since I've like left WWE and I'm not doing like TV stuff, I never really put on like a, a real outfit. So anyways, I thought it was a cute dress. I was figuring out what my outfit was going to be. I almost wore it with a Hardy Boys t-shirt underneath. And like, thank God I didn't because literally the first person I saw when I walked in the building was Matt Hardy. And I, I said to him, I was like, that would have been a little embarrassing if I just like show up in like your shirt. Anyways, um, no, I walked out of the bathroom in the hotel room as I was like checking out the outfit and um, Landslide was playing on my phone. And John's like, what is this Stevie Nicks? outfit <laughs> that you're wearing <laughs> i passed him in the hallway he goes have you seen the movie the craft <laughs> oh my god i wanted to kill him i was like dude like i like this outfit i think it's really cute let the slip dress is also the move of the fall it is it is it was but it had like a nice little like there was some some like lace with it and you you, you paired it with the white shirt so it was it was on point, you know, like the fit was. I liked it, it too. I, I liked, liked it. It, I it just was... took me a second because I walked out and John was like, okay, Stevie Nicks. Um, and then that put me in a little bit of a, a downward spiral. I was like, this is not okay. Should I not wear this? Oh my God. Should I just put on jeans and a t shirt and call it a day? No, no. No, I didn't. No, it, was no. a good, it was comfortable. It was it breezy. Looks, you got to just throw on a lace breezy. every now and then. You know, lace it up. Lace it. I, I decided up. to wear uh, a collared shirt that day. Mm -hmm. he I wore nice. A, thank you very much. Thank you. I was wearing my um, I was wearing a Oxford all black. Mm -hmm. And then I wore my vintage 1993 jeans that I bought because 
the only way to go is vintage denim from a thrift stop. Agreed. I don't care anymore. Like, well, any... they're stiff though. Are they really stiff? A, a bit, yeah. a bit. But they're but um. Just don't drop anything. So if you got to bend down, you're. Yeah, well, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll break them in. Like you're gonna see me rolling around in the dirt, like with them on. Like, you have I'm just to. Gonna, you know, like Pop I'll break a couple a squats down in them, stretch that denim out. I got a pair from 1992 that you wouldn't even think they are stiff and they are so broken in and perfect. what kind are they? I Lee Levi's Lee Lee or Levi's Levi's. Levi's. I want a pair of Lee's. I'm trying to find like really good vintage Lee jeans, mm. but it is, it is a bitch. To I find. think urban outfitter sells them. They're not vintage obviously, but I think they sell Lee jeans on urban outfitters. On now I have leg. to, now I, think I gotta they go. Might. I got to find yeah. an Urban Outfitters now because in the city to try to do anything, you were there. It's just yeah, to do. It's I just order everything online. I I I, I got to try on my pants because my body fluctuates. I lost 10 pounds in less than two weeks. So I was just like, shit, I got to figure it out now. As long as my waist stays the same, I'm good. Right. But sure. I got to figure out what fits, what doesn't, because I've been squatting. So now I got a little junk in the got trunk. That booty got, back there. Right. Like I got some thighs now, like the thigh meat be popping, you know, <laughs> and I got to figure out how's it going to look with the sneakers because I just bought a shit ton of dunks. Oh, don't even get me started. No, we should. Let oh could we back, can we back the Harachi truck up for one second? Yes, we Make can. Things, girl. When I you, love these. When you showed me those, I was like, hold up. Let's back up the This booty is my shoe. This is you my shoe. I found it. Found I've arrived. I've landed. You were like, I'll never find a shoe. You give me a chuck, da, 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 a van. I'm good. I was like, you will find something that calls to you. This is what Nike does. This is it. I get excited to put you. these on every day. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to throw them on because they feel great on my feet. I feel good. They're a comfortable shoe. So yeah. for those that are for the for a tortoise shell know, too, I like their little tortoise shell. They're Hirachis, folks. They're just this really crafted, nice, Hirachi. small, low, like low cut shoe right near the ankle. They have like really cool design. They have what? What, what is that? Is it like a cheetah print? No, it's a tortoise shell. Tortoise shell. Is it? It's like a. It looks leopardy, but yeah, it's like a tortoise shell more than yeah. it is leopard. I would say that's a good. That's well. First off, you're very flexible. Um, <laughs> do that. My, I think I would have like popped the hip, but uh, <laughs> I still got it. You do, girl. You do. So, what made you decide to pull the trigger on those? Well, they popped up on my Instagram feed, and I was like, "Oh, you know who would like those?" Is me. Um, so I ordered them, and then I they came, and I was like, "Oh, I do really like these. It's like the perfect amount of like chunky meets sleek." Because I don't like when a, when a shoe is too chunky. I just, I simply cannot do it. I check right. out. This is like this. But then I got the other ones that felt like too skinny and they felt like a cleat, which I did. I felt like I was going to play indoor soccer, which I'm not. Um. So, no, this is like the perfect combination for me. I love them. And I always do the Air Max 270s. I like yeah. those for working out in. But I've been hitting these guys. On, I, I took a little run in these guys in the treadmill yesterday. Which gotta was break rough, them in, but I did it. You did it. You got it done. Listen, shoes are meant to be worn. As somebody that has Agreed. had a lot, agree. And, and somebody that was sponsored by Jordan Brand and Nike for a little while, like I understand. Like, oh, people want to hold them like they're these like talismans, and they want to because there are there's a lot of shoes out there that cost big money. I got a pair of sixteen hundred dollars sneakers. Like, good lord, well, what, uh, what well, brand are they? Travis Scott's okay. The Nike, they're there. You can look them up. They're um Nike Fragment Low Travis's, and you never wear them. Oh no, I wear them all the time. I wore them to uh, I wore them to uh, the Grand Slam. Oh, great. Yeah. Oh, I don't. Well, listen, they were gifted to me. Sure, the, sure, you sure. You know what I mean? Like I did a I did a favor for a favor through a label, and it was they were gifted. That's so I, a nice one. I wasn't paying sixteen hundred, but I was given them. It's hard you know, to not choke on that a little bit, though. Hey, like, it's funny because I like having an ex I've got a, a couple. Well, I want to see what the let's see. Shoes. Yeah. And I oh, there's you just got to get get it over with. You've got to be out in them. And like all of a sudden it starts raining and you're just like, well, it, what am I going to do? But just keep let's, walking in these guys. Let's see. Hold on. I want to see what the resale value is, because are you familiar Ooh, with the see. resale value sneakers? Like it's the no. it's the rage. Like 
So people will buy a shoe, right? Let's say you're Hirachis, right? Let's say they have the in shoe. And by the grace of God, go Renee, you are able to get them for retail. So if you buy a shoe that for retail sells at, let's just say 150, 200 max, if it's the in shoe that somebody like a Travis Scott or a Kanye West wears or like a bad bunny, well, that resale value of the shoe goes up exponentially. So sure. you're looking, you're looking at anywhere from, uh, let's just say like Kanye West Red Octobers right now, his like Yeezy shoe goes for anywhere like if, like a genuine pair, eight to fifteen thousand dollars as a resale $15, value. Fifteen thousand dollars. Yep. I don't care how rich you are. I could never. I could never. Yeah. Like, so, and that's uh, the thing. So anytime I have dropped a bit of coin on a shoe, it needs to be an everyday shoe. When you're like, okay, so I do have a pair of Louboutins that I bought for, I want to say like a WrestleMania or something. Like I did buy them for a reason to go with an outfit. They kill my feet. I never wear them. They sit in my closet. They're so impractical. Like they were good for that one outfit. You can't wear them out. You are in absolute excruciating pain. Otherwise, if I'm doing an expensive shoe, I need to be able to hit the town on it. I need to be able to get some mileage on this shoe because dropping like fifteen hundred dollars on a shoe that you wear occasionally is that's what uh, a crazy person would do. It, it's lunacy, but there is a supply, want and demand for your shoe. So I guarantee you, if you were to like put them on, let's say like a goat or a graded or one of those real reels. I think I you, have a goat account. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> you can flip them for big money. So like I'm looking at I'm on Fight Club right now and the the Travis Scott um fragment lows that I have, they're selling for fifth they're selling for eleven hundred. Um if you go to StockX, they're selling for thirteen hundred. If you're on goat, they're selling for um thirteen as well. So it's an expensive shoe. Stadium goods, which I like, I prefer getting my resale value shoes at stadium goods just because they're more authentic. Mm -hmm. um, you could like they could tell like because the repro game, like like fake shoes, it, you can't oh, even tell a real. You you, you yeah. can't even tell a real from a fake at this but point. You know. Oh, but I know. You know. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, I'm I'm doing like Isn't searches. It crazy, and though, looking, like it's it's crazy when you see like I get like this, which is like honestly one of my worst habits is I will become hyper fixated on something like the loaf where I'm like, I need I, now I got to have this shoe. I have yeah, to have it. Absolutely. So when I was going to bed last night, I don't know what made me think about this. Well, I do. Um, so my new docs that I got are very similar to a pair of mine that I love, but they're actually like kind of a size too big. But they are just like the original black docs, 10 holes, but they were um, across with Marc Jacobs is like grunge line. Love this shoe. It's oh. so great, but it is just a little bit too big. So I was searching last night for some reason. Like, oh, I wonder what these are going for now. But it led me to these other Marc Jacobs docs that were like an, the oxblood red. And they had these like chains that linked around the back that had all these charms on them that I was like, oh, that fucking shoe. <laughs> but they were like two grand, maybe twenty five hundred dollars. I was like, hey, I'm not pulling the trigger on that because, dude, I feel like I have been dropping money left, right and center the last like two weeks. I just had to buy new beats. I had to buy new or uh, um, these aren't beats. Sorry, they're the Bose. I just had to buy new headphones because my dumb ass got off the treadmill at home the other day and was sitting outside talking to John, pulled my headphones off, talking, talking, go inside, make dinner and shut it down for the night. Pours down right on my headphones. Oh. Totally trash. I was devastated. I turned them on. They're like, <laughs> like screaming at me. I was like, no, I have to buy new headphones. So I had to buy those. I had to buy new luggage which is never cheap. No. Luggage is so no. expensive. And then the loafers. Like, I need to give a little breather here. Just have to, like, look into the savings account here. This is crazy. But what does Ange say? Can't take it to the grave. There you go. Caskets don't have Don't pockets. have pockets. There you go. So, you know what? You're good. You make sure the bills are paid. You make sure that Nora goes with, like, with everything that she needs. Mama can spend a little bit. I outside. know, but I just like I right. I'm I'm like a very guilty spender. But when it is something like hey, I do need because I have my luggage, but guess who stole my luggage? <laughs> so now I need to buy new luggage. I'm like, wait, how'd that happen? Why don't we literally flew to New York and he was like, You have to check a bag? I was like, 
Yeah, I do. Because I only have one piece of luggage left because you took it. You took my carry on. I don't I no longer own one. So, yes, I am checking my luggage. Oh, my God. He so He sounded yes, I, so shocked. How rude the audacity. This oh, marriage. So I know we're 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 winding down, but there's two things I want to get into. I'm going to save to me the, the, the coolest thing okay. at the end. But um, I really just to get back on the wrestling thing real quick. Smackdown on Friday night. I was thoroughly sports entertained by the genius of Sami Zayn and Jay Uso. What Dude. went to that opening segment was by far probably the best opening segment I've seen WWE do in the last three years. It was, it gave you everything, right? First off, the pop and circumstance of that bloodline it's like, great. entrance, it makes me feel so important and I'm not part of it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Like it yeah. always feels big because they're doing something real smart with Roman. They're keeping him off TV. And when you no see one's him, cooler than the Uso, so I will say like oh, I, see, they're those two dudes are like some of the people like I kind of miss whenever I see like their Instagram stuff. I'm like, oh, I miss you guys. Like they're just the best. Yeah. They're so good. So everybody comes out, they're all doing their thing, but then you have Sammy who's just like you just plug him in and it's weird and he's like dancing around and you know he just wants to be down because these guys are cool and it's indicative to high school where he's like the dork and the outcast but the the cool guys are like there's something about him that I like let's bring him in one of the one friend is a little bit distrusting and Jey Uso is like I don't know if we should bring him in. Does he ha is it genuine? Is he coming from my spot? Is the captain of the football team still going to like and need me or is this new person like is it there? It's basically yeah. Degrassi for WWE. <laughs> but it is. Thank you. It got you. And <laughs> uh, they, so they're doing a the whole spiel, but the best part at the end is when Roman starts to talk about Sammy's like why are you wearing that shirt? And we all thought Sammy was going to get outcast yeah yeah gone, yeah see you, gone see you later and then kevin owens would come out and they would have the twins versus uh ko and, and and sammy for the tag belts but that didn't happen he got crowned the honorary oos and got so the what a moment what a huge moment <laughs> oh my god i just like i can't get enough of sammy zane like i just think his character is so great like you talk about like what a key player he is in terms of like, so if you good. just want entertaining segments, he's it. Also, let's not forget the guy is a incredible professional wrestler. Like Absolutely. when he puts on matches, holy shit, the guy is insane. But yeah, you give him some TV time to be creative and be himself and like do this character. It's it's incredible. Well, I he, love watching everything he does. He owns it because it, it's he's very committed. That yeah. Because, listen, let, I'm going to keep it a buck here. That bloodline storyline started to get a little tiresome because they booked themselves into a corner with putting both titles on Roman. And then you put the both tag team championships on the Usos. It becomes a little tiresome. But then you brought Sammy in and then the whole thing changes. Yeah. And now it becomes like this internal struggle between Jay and and Sammy. And Sammy's just vying. He wants to be praised. How did that all start? Like, did it start as like a social media thing of Sammy trying to join yeah. the bloodline? It did, it's right? Because I feel like that's one of those really interesting organic things where you just kind of like start something. You plant a little seedling, like just kind of messing around out of boredom or whatever. And now all of a sudden it's like this beautiful like story. And you know how good or how funny you have to be in real life that it oh carries over on TV where <laughs> you're going to pop the boys on camera. Now, all of those dudes are professional and Roman is real good at being stoic and dead face. But there have been several times where the camera has to cut away from him because <laughs> Sammy, he pops, he gets popped by Sammy. So one of the best things, I don't know if you, if you, if you looked, but there was, um there was a photo of um Solo Sokoa and the twins and Roman and and uh, Rakishi said something like yeah, damn proud yeah, yeah, or yeah. something. And then Sammy re quote tweets him and goes, damn, pops. <laughs> <laughs> he's the best. Like, he's just so good. I, I keep kind of saying the same thing of like, he's great. He's so much fun. But like, honestly, like seeing 
seeing him get to do the things that he is doing right now and like really getting that spotlight and people really understanding the talent that is Sami Zayn right. is just exceptional. He's so great. I love so, him. Uh, I'll make a reference here. I don't know if you'll get it, but um, I know that people that are listening and watching on YouTube will get it. Um, so when Kanye West got his Rockefeller chain, it's highlighted in the the short Netflix documentary called Genius. And it was like this big day for him, right? And you can see he had the shit eating grin. He was very excited. He was nervous. And then when he got the chain, like he just was so happy. So when Sammy got the shirt, it's the exact same thing. He's jumping around like he's like, this is the greatest moment of his life. But the best part about it was the camera starts to cut to Jay Uso. And Jay has this look on his face like, I cannot believe like what is going on right mm -hmm. now. Which the foreshadowing leads me to believe that, and this is what I feel, they're going to lean in more with Sammy because he's going to take the bullet for the tribal chief and something's and Roman's going to love him and they're going to throw Jay out. And I feel we're going to get that Jay baby face run that they started to tease two years ago. Ooh. I really I really feel that because it's been too good. Like the conflict between Sammy and, and, and Jay has been too good. Like it has to, like something has to happen. And I don't want the normal thing that's going to happen. All right, let's just kick out Sammy Zane. No, kick out Jay and let Jay get jealous of Sammy. And now he's like, his goal now is to destroy the bloodline. I, I just think it's great storytelling. Ooh, it was super I like fun. that a lot. Sammy's yeah. great. You're, he's yeah. absolutely fantastic. He Jeff's kiss. Big Sami Zayn fans. Actually, guys, if you want, we've got our old episodes with Sami Zayn. Give him a listen. Oh, Cue yeah. him up. Th there's Cue him three up. of them. What I would give to have. Do we have three with him? Yeah, you two. You guys have two. And then he and then guest hosted with me. And we're talking about existentialism and professional right, wrestling. Right, 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 right. Smart guy. Smart guy he is. All right, listen, my kid's crying downstairs. Yeah. I must go help my husband Um, and uh, grab that kid and Real stop quick. these tears. Real quick, honorable mention though, big shout outs to this. This is what I want to end with. Um, guess who started following me on social media? Who? A guy named Text Message. <gasps> wow. My dad's following you. I've never felt more honored in my life. Wow. Text coming in with the swoop. I love that. I was like, whoa, 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 what? And he gave me a little fire emoji on like a video <laughs> that I posted. I was like, at first, it took me a second, and I'm like, Follow. I know this guy. Oh, my God. Yes. See, my dad knows. My dad knows where the goods are at. So he now I'm just liking it. a whole bunch of photos. Get in there. Give him get my dad likes my dad likes the social media interactions. He's a big fan. Oh, nice. Brett Michaels photo, dad. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. This has been another stellar edition of the session, I'm going to go get this. This my God, Nora has been like cranky pants the last two days. So that's why I must go help. It's I don't know what her deal is. I don't know if she's got more teeth coming in or Oof. I don't know what her deal is. She's cranky pants the last two days. So I'm going to go deal with that. Um, thanks for hanging out with me. This was fun. My pleasure as always. Yeah. All right, guys, get ready because the spooky season is upon us. October. We're about to get real scary and creepy. This has been The Sessions. Like, subscribe, share, tell everybody about us. Bye-bye.